We call it one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Four and a half thousand years old. Two and a half million stone blocks. Each one weighing more than a car. But here's what they don't tell you. We still can't figure out how they built it. The Great Pyramid of Giza isn't just ancient. It's impossible by our standards. Twelve mysteries that make engineers scratch their heads and archaeologists rewrite textbooks. If you value documented ancient history like this, subscribe. It's the best way to support our work. Also comment from which city you're hearing this from. This script is researched and factual, using sources from National Geographic Archaeological Institute and the Journal of Egyptian Archaeology. Now back to the story. These 12 cases will show you why the Great Pyramid remains the most confusing monument on Earth. Number one, the precision problem. Year 2580 BCE, Giza Plateau. They aligned this pyramid to true north within 3 sixtieths of a degree. That's more accurate than most modern buildings. Your GPS has worse precision. The ancient Egyptians had no magnetic compass. No satellite, no laser level. They used the stars. Somehow they tracked stellar rotation across months and calculated true north to a margin that makes surveyors jealous. The pyramid's base forms a square. Each side measures 755 feet. The difference between the longest and shortest sides, less than eight inches across a foundation bigger than 10 football fields. Flinders, Petrie measured every angle in 1883. His instruments detected variations smaller than a pencil width. The eastern side measures 755 feet, eight inches. The western side measures 755 feet, one inch. Seven inch difference across a structure that covers 13 acres. Modern concrete foundations rarely achieve this precision. The ancient builders set two and a half million stones with tolerances that shame contemporary construction. Number two, the internal temperature mystery. Recorded in 1986, interior chambers hold steady at 68 degrees Fahrenheit, year-round. Desert outside swings from freezing to 120 degrees. Inside stays constant. The pyramid acts like a massive climate control system. No vents, no air conditioning, just stone. Scientists measured the thermal mass, limestone blocks, store and release heat in perfect cycles. The king's chamber sits at exactly 68 degrees every day of the year. Ancient air conditioning that works better than modern systems. Thermal imaging reveals the pyramid's heat distribution patterns. Surface temperatures fluctuate 40 degrees daily. Internal temperatures never vary more than two degrees. The limestone blocks average two and a half tons each. They store heat during the day and release it at night. The internal chambers benefit from this thermal battery effect. Air circulates through microscopic gaps between stones. Natural convection maintains perfect climate control for millennia after construction. Cold stone, hot sand, perfect control. Number three, the missing capstone riddle. Every pyramid needs a capstone. The Great Pyramids is gone. Not fallen, not broken, gone. Al Macrizi wrote in 1400 CE that locals saw a perfect pyramid until the 12th century. Then the top disappeared. Some say earthquake, others say treasure hunters. The mystery runs deeper. If the capstone was gold or electrum like other pyramids, it would have weighed 15 tons, solid precious metal, worth millions today. No record of anyone finding it, no archaeological trace. 15 tons of gold doesn't just vanish. Medieval Arab historians describe the capstone as polished electrum that reflected sunlight for miles. Travelers used it as a landmark from the Red Sea. The capstone measured 30 feet square at its base, tapered to a point nine feet above the pyramid's current flat top. Local legends claim it could be seen from Damascus on clear days. Ibn Battuta visited in 1325 and wrote about the missing peak. He interviewed old men who remembered when it disappeared. They said it vanished overnight. No broken pieces, no theft reports, just gone. Number four, the acoustic anomaly, discovered in 2002. The King's Chamber amplifies sound at exactly 117 hertz. That frequency matches the human vocal range perfectly. Speak inside and your voice resonates through the entire structure. Whisper at one end, hear it clearly at the other. The chamber dimensions create a resonance box. Length, width, height work together like a massive musical instrument. Early visitors reported strange humming sounds. Flinders Petrie documented acoustic effects in 1883. The pyramid was designed to amplify human voices across impossible distances. The king's chamber measures 34 feet long by 17 feet wide by 19 feet high. These proportions create standing wave patterns at specific frequencies. Sound waves bounce between walls and reinforce each other. The granite walls reflect sound perfectly. The chamber acts like a three-dimensional echo chamber. Researchers recorded voices from inside the chamber that could be heard clearly in the queen's chamber, 200 feet away through solid stone corridors. Modern acoustic engineers study the pyramid's sound properties. They've identified multiple resonant frequencies. Sounds at 59 hertz 
create vibrations felt throughout the structure. Frequencies above 100 hertz focus in the king's chamber. The entire pyramid vibrates like a tuning fork when specific notes are played inside. This wasn't accidental. The Egyptians understood acoustics well enough to build a 481 foot tall musical instrument. Number five, the weight distribution puzzle. Total mass, six million tons. Foundation pressure, only 15 tons per square foot. That's less stress than most skyscrapers put on bedrock. Engineers can't figure out how the pyramid distributes weight through internal chambers and passages. Relieving chambers above the king's chamber takes structural load off the ceiling. Five separate chambers stack on top of each other, each one perfectly calculated to redirect millions of tons of stone. Modern architects use computer models for this kind of load analysis. The Egyptians did it with copper tools and rope. Structural engineers calculated that solid stone construction would create foundation pressures exceeding 50 tons per square foot. The bedrock would crack. The pyramid would sink. Instead, the builders created a hollow framework that spreads weight evenly. The internal chambers reduce total mass by 12%. Passage systems create stress relief points that prevent fractures. The Grand Gallery acts as a massive keystone that locks the upper structure together. Computer analysis reveals the pyramid's structural efficiency, rivals modern engineering. Every internal space serves a load-bearing purpose. The Queen's Chamber sits directly over the pyramid's center of mass. The King's Chamber positions itself to balance lateral forces. Even the descending passage angles downward to transfer weight to bedrock. No modern building achieves this level of structural optimization without sophisticated computer modeling. Number six, the precision cutting enigma. Granite blocks in the King's Chamber fit together with gaps smaller than a credit card. Some joints measure less than five hundredths of an inch. The granite came from Aswan, 500 miles south. Each block weighs 50 tons. They cut granite with copper tools. Copper is softer than granite. It shouldn't work. Experiments with copper saws and abrasive sand take days to cut inches. The pyramid has thousands of perfectly cut granite blocks. Dennis Stocks calculated it would take 40 years just to cut the stones. They built the entire pyramid in 20 years. The King's Chamber contains 100 granite blocks, each one cut to tolerances that modern stone masons struggle to achieve with diamond tools. The walls show no tool marks, no chisel scars, no evidence of how they achieved such precision. Microscopic analysis reveals the granite surfaces are smoother than machine-polished modern stone. The blocks fit together so tightly that you cannot slide paper between joints. Experimental archaeology attempts to replicate the cutting techniques have failed. Copper saws with quartz sand abrasive can cut granite, but slowly. A team of stonemasons using traditional methods took three weeks to cut one block to pyramid standards. At that rate, cutting all the granite in the Great Pyramid would require 200 years. The construction timeline doesn't allow for such slow progress. If you value documented ancient history like this, subscribe. It's the best way to support our work. Also comment from which city you're hearing this from. Now back to the story. Number seven, the mathematical mystery. The pyramid's height times pi equals the perimeter of its base. Coincidence? The ancient Egyptians supposedly didn't know pi, yet the ratio appears throughout the structure. Height, 481 feet. Base perimeter, 3,023 feet. 481 times pi equals 3,022.9. Error margin, one-tenth of one percent. Either the Egyptians knew advanced mathematics 1,500 years before the Greeks, or they stumbled onto the most important mathematical constant by accident. The mathematical relationships extend beyond pi. The pyramid's slope angle is 51 degrees 52 minutes. This creates a right triangle where the vertical height and horizontal distance follow the golden ratio. The apothem, the distance from the center to the middle of any side, relates to the height by the square root of phi. These aren't simple geometric relationships. They require sophisticated mathematical knowledge. Ancient Egyptian papyrus scrolls show they used a value of 22 sevenths for pi in calculations. This approximation appears in the Rhine papyrus from 1650 BCE, but the Great Pyramid uses the true value of pi to four decimal places. Either they knew the exact value and kept it secret, or they discovered it independently through geometric construction methods lost to history. Number eight, the internal passage riddle. The Grand Gallery angles upward at exactly 26 degrees, same angle as the pyramid's exterior slope. The passage is 28 feet tall, nine feet wide, 153 feet long, but here's the problem. It serves no structural purpose. It doesn't lead anywhere important. It doesn't reduce weight or provide ventilation. It's just there, taking up space, requiring massive engineering effort. Some researchers think it held a counterweight system for moving the pharaoh's sarcophagus. No evidence supports this theory. The Grand Gallery remains a beautiful, pointless mystery. 
The Grand Gallery's construction defies explanation. 27 stone courses rise to create the corbelled ceiling. Each course overhangs the one below by three inches. The walls lean inward as they rise, meeting at the top like an inverted V. This technique requires precise calculation to prevent collapse during construction. The ancient builders created architectural drawings accurate to the millimeter. Grooves cut into the gallery's side walls suggest some kind of mechanical system once operated here. The grooves are perfectly straight and uniform. They run the entire length of the passage. Some researchers propose the gallery housed a ramp system for raising heavy stones. Others suggest it contained wooden machinery for operating internal mechanisms. No trace of wood or metal remains, only the mysterious grooves and the question of what they held. Number nine, the missing workers, uh, village, four million tons of stone, 20 year construction timeline. That requires 20,000 workers minimum. They had to eat, sleep, get paid. Where did they live? Archeologists found workers, quarters near other pyramids. Nothing this big exists at Giza. Mark Lenner found bakeries and brew houses, enough for 5,000 workers maximum. The math doesn't work. Either they built it with far fewer people than calculated, or the workers' city is still buried somewhere under the sand. Calculations based on stone moving rates suggest the pyramid required 25,000 workers during peak construction seasons. Now, these workers needed housing, food preparation areas, tool workshops, and medical facilities. Satellite imagery reveals no trace of a settlement large enough. Ground-penetrating radar surveys have mapped the Giza Plateau extensively. They found isolated workshops and small housing areas. Nothing approaching the scale required for 25,000 people. The workers consumed enormous quantities of food. Estimates suggest they needed 1,600 cattle and 10,000 loaves of bread daily. Feeding this workforce required vast storage areas and cooking facilities. Archaeological evidence shows they ate beef, fish, and bread in quantities that strain belief. Yet the infrastructure to support this operation remains invisible. Bread, beer, 20,000 men, where? Number 10, the electromagnetic anomaly. Discovered in 2017, the pyramid focuses electromagnetic energy in its internal chambers and base. Russian scientists used radio waves to map the structure. They found concentrated electromagnetic fields in the king's chamber and beneath the foundation. The limestone and granite create natural electromagnetic resonance. Radio waves entering the pyramid get amplified and focused. The ancient Egyptians couldn't have known about electromagnetic radiation, yet they built a structure that manipulates it perfectly. The electromagnetic effects are measurable and repeatable. Radio waves at specific frequencies concentrate in the king's chamber with intensities 10 times greater than background levels. The granite sarcophagus acts as an electromagnetic lens, focusing energy into a tight beam. Limestone blocks throughout the structure show piezoelectric properties. They generate small electrical charges when compressed. Scientists map the pyramid's electromagnetic signature using advanced radar equipment. The entire structure acts like a massive antenna. It collects electromagnetic energy from the atmosphere and channels it through the internal passages. The king's chamber sits at the focal point of this energy concentration. Whether this effect is intentional or coincidental remains hotly debated among researchers. Number 11, the erosion patterns paradox. The pyramid shows water erosion, deep channels carved by flowing water. Problem, Giza has been desert for 4,000 years. The erosion predates known Egyptian civilization. Geologist Robert Schock argues the erosion patterns require centuries of heavy rainfall. The Sahara was green grassland 12,000 years ago. If Schock is right, the pyramid is twice as old as archeologists claim. The erosion evidence is undeniable. The timeline implications rewrite everything we know about ancient Egypt. Geological analysis reveals two distinct erosion patterns on the pyramid's surface. Wind erosion creates horizontal grooves and sand blasting effects. Water erosion creates vertical channels and scallop depressions. The pyramid shows both patterns, but the water erosion is older and deeper. Core samples from the limestone blocks show mineral deposits consistent with prolonged water exposure. Climate data from ice cores and lake sediments confirms the Sahara received heavy rainfall between 12,000 and 8,000 years ago. Annual precipitation exceeded 40 inches during this wet period. The current desert climate began around 4,000 BCE. The water erosion patterns on the pyramid require at least 2,000 years of regular rainfall to develop. This timeline pushes construction back to the green Sahara period. Archaeologists reject the older dating based on lack of evidence for advanced civilization 12,000 years ago. Geologists point to unmistakable erosion patterns that can't be explained by four millennia of desert conditions. The debate continues, but the stones don't lie. Water carved those channels, and water hasn't fallen heavily at Giza for 6,000 years. Number 12, 
the missing construction records. Egyptians documented everything, tax records, worker payments, stone deliveries, religious ceremonies. The pyramid required the largest construction project in human history until modern times. No contemporary records exist. No papyrus scrolls describing the construction, no wall paintings showing the building process, no worker graffiti with dates. The pyramid appears in history fully built with no explanation of how it got there. Later, pharaohs left detailed records of much smaller projects. The greatest construction achievement in ancient Egypt has no paperwork, but the absence of records is more suspicious than their destruction. Egyptian bureaucrats carved administrative details into stone temples that survive today. They painted construction scenes on tomb walls. They wrote progress reports on papyrus scrolls stored in desert conditions that preserve organic materials for millennia. The Great Pyramid's construction should have generated thousands of documents. None exist. Later, pharaohs documented much smaller projects exhaustively. Hatshepsut's mortuary temple has detailed construction records. Ramses II left building accounts for dozens of temples. Even minor repairs to existing structures generated official documentation. The Great Pyramid represents ten times more work than any later project. Yet it left no paper trail. Some researchers suggest the records were deliberately destroyed to hide construction secrets. Others propose they were written on perishable materials that didn't survive. But Egyptian scribes used, used stone and pottery for important documents. They wouldn't trust the world's greatest construction project to papyrus alone. The missing records suggest something extraordinary about the pyramid's origin that ancient Egyptians wanted forgotten. 2023, ground penetrating radar reveals a massive void above the Grand Gallery. 30 meters long, 6 meters high, untouched for four and a half millennia, the chamber sits directly above the King's Chamber, accessible only through passages we haven't found yet. Cosmic ray imaging confirmed the void's existence and estimated its size. Whatever secrets the pyramid holds, we're still finding them. The new chamber changes everything we thought we knew about the pyramid's internal structure. It's larger than the King's Chamber and positioned at the pyramid's most structurally critical point. The void appears empty, but that could mean it contains materials invisible to cosmic ray detection. Wood, paper, or organic materials wouldn't show up in the scans. Plans for robotic exploration face resistance from Egyptian authorities. They fear disturbing the monument's structural integrity, but the questions demand answers. What's in the hidden chamber? Why was it sealed? Does it contain the missing records that explain how they built this impossible structure? 4,500 years later, and we still can't explain how they built it. Every answer leads to 10 more questions. Every measurement reveals new impossibilities. The Great Pyramid isn't just ancient architecture. It's a riddle wrapped in two and a half million stone blocks, daring us to solve it. The mystery deepens with every discovery.